Hi everyone, and welcome to Hamsey Green. This is an area that I spent most of my childhood and early adult life. In many ways, it's the sort of place that you just pass through when you're going out of Croydon towards the countryside. But it's seen some headlines over the years, and I will talk about that on the journey. So, let's go and have some fun discovering Hamsey Green. In terms of where it is, it's quite literally on the border of Greater London and Surrey, and I'll show you where the actual border point is as we go through. The far side parade of shops over there was the first to be developed. Uh, the other two that you can just about see through there, and we're going to cover all of this, were developed in the 1930s. And this area here where I'm going to start, I think is more 1970s. Some of the farm properties still exist, such as Bats Farm and Court Farm. They're around Tyth Pitchell Lane, and we'll get to that. And of course, a pub was built. And there's a story about that, which I'll talk about. I'm going to talk about a lot of things. So once upon a time here, there was the usual mix. I seem to recall... Uh, estate agent, Gray's estate agents. I think in this plot, which is now a flooring shop, there was Goodness Records. Who remembers Goodness Records? They had a few stores around, I think mainly this sort of London area. And I think there was a greengrocer's here. And I think it was called Quality Fruiterers. And on the corner here, Kingswood Avenue, there was a sort of clothes wear, sh clothes wear shop, clothing wear, <laughs> baby clothes, that kind of stuff I seem to recall. Honestly, can't remember the name. And with any of these, if you find the name, please add them to the comments on YouTube itself. That'd be great. Lloyd's Pharmacy. I think it's always been a chemist. I seem to remember one of those um, charity collections of the little boy was outside here. And I think there was a cigarette machine on the wall here once. And this was Jay Forbes, sweet shop. And this has always been a supermarket. The earliest one I can remember was Cooper's, and then it was Fine Fair, and then I think Gateway, Summerfield. It was a one of these all-day type stores, 7-Eleven or something. And then, and this is quite a recent one along this. QVS was Woolworths. I mean, it's almost, it's got that look, hasn't it? The frontage has never really changed. Uh, but you used to have the, the, the double doors there. I spent many hours in there buying stuff, pick and mix, records, bits and pieces. I think the co-op has been here possibly forever. <laughs> um, maybe, maybe not quite forever. The co-op as a store have been going for many years. And... Um, just beyond co-op, which is now a car park, there was a sort of couple of other premises here. Just going to wander down here and have a little chat. Um, I seem to remember an off-license. And uh, that plot there was, which is now residential. I think there's some business activity around the front, but we'll, have a, we'll take a look. Uh, that was Leithwood's Garage or jet garage, jet for petrol, Leithwoods for the car repairs. And where these properties are here, it used to be the home of the Becks family. They had a number of businesses, I think Undertaker was one of them for the main Mr. Becks. And it was pulled down in about the mid 20, 2016, 2017 maybe. It was pulled down as part of the plot to completely renovate this, because for this being Leithwoods, uh, it went to Ken's Autos. There was a big fire there once on the news. One of the areas where Hamsey Green hit the headlines was when this featured on Nationwide. That was in the summer of 1975. And there was a duck called Stanley that attacked people. And John Stapleton, who's still a presenter now and broadcaster, he, uh, he presented the show. Now, I've put a link to that in YouTube. It's a Facebook link to the BBC archive. So if you've got Facebook or if you 
if you're not on Facebook and you know someone who is, they might be able to show it to you. But it does provide a really, really good look at how this was, this particular area. And one of the shots is from where I am now, I'm just gonna turn the camera. You'll see this shot in the video. And as well as it just being an amusing story, the, the very typical of what they covered in the Nationwide program in those days, it's, it's a good kind of time capsule almost for life 46 years ago. This is Hamsey Green Pond, which I'll be honest, it almost looks like Hamsey Green Puddle. Um, and you can see the, the side view of Leith was there. Well, I just heard a duck, but that might have just been more luck than judgment. Uh, so this is where Stanley was and um, where it featured. This, this was originally much, much larger pond. I think it was a third of an acre back in the day. And it, it shows on maps going back well over 100 years, 200 years maybe. And it was on a watering hole. This was the, the kind of route from people going from the country into Croydon for the market. Croydon Council now own the management of this pond. And Kingswood Lane, this was only made up to a tarmac finish in 1970. That eventually goes down to the King's Woods, where I've done one of my other videos on the Bluebells. And there was once an airfield there, Kingswood Airfield. And I feel there's enough subject matter for me to do a separate video on that one. So that's something to look forward to. So yeah, just to mention the, the boundaries, we've got Tithe Pitshaw Lane over there, Kingswood Lane here, and we, Hamsey Green does sit between Wallingham and Sandstead, both featured on other videos, and I can put the links above, link to Sandstead and the link to Wallingham, which should show up if you're looking at it on the, uh, on the desktop. So you see Waterman's, the cleaners, established 1846. We're going to go on a little tour of that in a minute. Well, not a tour of the cleaners. We'll have a little look behind there. One of these was Sweetware. I think it was this Coco Sandwich Bar. Small shop. And Sweetware was a sweet shop and news agent. My dad used to like a, a slightly further walk to come up here for his paper. And they used to sell models, Airfix models, Tammy R models, and I used to buy loads of them in there. I used to love making models. And um, Arthur, the man who ran Sweetware, was excellent at model making. He really was excellent. Love to hear from him. Nice chap. Fish and chip shop, I think, has always been here. I'm just going to wander up to Hamsey Green Garden. So we're now walking towards Wallingham. And it was the first development in Wallingham that included running water, piped gas, cabled electricity. In other words, it was built into the development rather than being an add-on afterwards. Houses up to that point had just gone with the times and you had what you had. I did read that there was potentially, perhaps, still somewhere here, a dugout or a shelter that was used by the civil defence team. I don't know what that is. I wonder if that's it. That possibly is some kind of, what would you say, ventilation hole? I did do some Googling, but it, I was unsuccessful. And what does that relate to? I really don't know. I guess that could be it, couldn't it? That's one to take away and add a comment in the comments. So this is Hamsey Green Gardens. You just, I did a paper around here back in the day. And you just go up and it just forms a square all the way around. So yeah, one of the first developments. And on this green area, so you've got green both sides, just slightly raised as you can see. In VE day, 8th of May, 1945, there's a big bonfire and someone managed to find from somewhere a few fireworks. Back to the shop area. I did mention about how this area had hit the headlines sometimes for, not always for the right reasons. 
But uh, along Kingswood Lane, just over there, there was some clearance work being done in one of the houses. And a body was discovered down a well. And it was a Polish man. Some investigation was carried out, but they never did get to the bottom of it. So a poor man died. I am told, and I'm sure I've seen on a map, that there was once a club behind here. Nightclub, social club, a club. Absolutely no sign of it now. Sort of rear access and things. Feel like one of those urban explorers. Anyway, I, um, I was told this by someone who's been very helpful in coming up with some recollections of the area but I can't find any real story or evidence about it. I might have to park that one until I can. Heading now into Tithe Pitshaw Lane. I, I could almost call it School Alley, because it housed the three schools that I went to. I went to Hamsey Green Infants, Hamsey Green Juniors, that became Hamsey Green Middle, and then Wallingham Secondary. The schools only opened at about 1949. There was too many school children and not enough school places. Fond memories of the schools here. And while we were at the secondary school, they closed down the old infant school. And that moved around the corner, which we'll get to. So this was my junior, then middle school. I mean, I won't go into the school premises, but I remember this so, so well. Wow, it does bring back some memories. That was a playground straight ahead. I think it's the car park now. So the school have done a great video to promote their facilities. And when going through there, it brought back so many, so many memories because a lot of it is still exactly the same as I remember it. Obviously, certain things have changed. But you know, structurally, it's gonna be the same. It's a big, solid old building. They built them to last in 1949. And I recall then that in the chair store, which was sort of opposite the hall, there was a Dalek. Yes, you heard right, a Dalek, as in Doctor Who. And it was just sitting there in the corner of this chair cupboard and I never quite know how it got there, why it was there. Doctor Who was pretty much as popular then as it is now. So if anyone knows the story of the Dalek at Hamsey Green Junior slash Middle School, please let me know in the comments. I would love to know. I don't know why I didn't ask at the time, really. I could have just said, oi, about this Dalek. Remember the school very well. And heading now towards the secondary school. So I think that was a separate entrance to the infant school maybe so this is the service entrance to Warningham School and Sixth Form College but it was Warningham County Secondary School and uh, straight ahead I remember we had a form class uh, I'll kind of zoom in but it'll be a weak quality on that crossways I don't want to enter the school premises there used to be some bike sheds all along the left there where there are now car parking spots and we'll get some other views as we walk round. And that was how we went into school. I mean, I assume the current pupils at the school go in that way as well. There were tennis courts here and football and multi-purpose hard sport facilities. And I remember at the back of there was metalwork and other crafts and maybe some art. There's probably some stuff online for Wallingham School. For some reason, I didn't put it in, or look at it in my research. If I find something, I'll put it in. But it's just Google, isn't it? Now, the road turns around here, but the original Tithe Pitshaw Lane went straight ahead. Sanderstead to Whiteleaf countryside area. There we go. We are here. And we've come along here. So obviously it will go down and eventually I guess you can you can choose different routes and get down to Whiteleaf. 
I hope you're enjoying these videos. If you'd like to guarantee that you see or get notified of any future videos, just hit the subscribe button and that will take care of that random post box. I've probably been there forever, but I didn't know. So we're now over the road from Wallingham School. And this is the facilities. So floodlit AstroTurf pitch, cricket nets and sports field. It was probably just the last bit that existed when I went to school here. Is it Miss Kay's art room? I think Mr George's was further up. Main entrance to the school, sixth form block. And the formal entrance straight through the gap there. There we have AstroTurf pitches. We've got floodlights. It's a nice day. There's a load of seagulls over there. Rugby pitch in the corner, football pitch. Really good facilities. So that's a, a little bit about the schools. And as you can see, they're all connected. They've all got really good modern facilities. I'm not being sponsored by that. <laughs> as I walk back towards my next bit, I'm reminded of the fact that Wallingham School used to always have a choir at the Blue Peter Carroll service. Question, does that still happen? Does the Blue Peter Carroll service still happen? It was on the Christmas edition when they used to open presents for themselves and the cats and dogs. But I recall that. It was always two or three other schools and Wallingham School. Answers in the comments, you know what to do. Most of the, the housing, the growth of housing in this area took place in the 1930s. And of course, in the late 1930s and early 1940s, we had the Second World War. And with that comes danger and nasty business. So Princess Avenue and Clyde Avenue suffered bomb damage. They're not far from me now. And there was a doodle bug, so the V1, that landed in Tudor Close. That was in 1944 because they only came in in that latter stage of the war, possibly only a month or two before then. And, uh, but a slightly earlier, in 1941, a poor young lad was killed when a plane was forced to make an emergency landing in the area. So it brought tragedy on different levels. The site of the Good Companions. It was originally built in 1934. Well, that was when the first license application went in. We possibly built a bit after that. And it was voted out residents' objections and so on, because there's issues and rules and laws about pubs in the area. And this is the green area just outside the site of the Good Companions. So it eventually opened in 1955. I do remember the Good Hughes Brewery, as in Duncan Goodhue, possibly. Uh, it was a beef eater at some stage. But in 2002, it hit the headlines for the wrong reason. Uh, there was a shooting. Two men died in a revenge incident. So we've had some uh, troubles in this area at times. It was closed in 2012 and the site was acquired by Lidl. It was very, very controversial. Um, and Lidl paid about 2.2 million, which uh, was felt to be way over the odds about three times the value in fact and this was said to be partly because of a bidding war after Tesco apparently became interested. So there were 200 residents protesting, councillors and generally far more against than were in favour. So just another view. So that would have been the Leithwood's garage. Good old 403 bus. And there's the pond. There's Waterman's The Cleaners Parade, walling them in that direction. And then we've got, obviously, the site of the Good Companions. Well, the residents won their protest. And what that means is that whilst Little may own it, they can't do anything with it. And it's been like that for many, many years now. So who knows what the next step will be. Final parade built in 
opened, the shops were open sort of April to May time, 1934, with a mock Tudor style. And I remember that was originally NSS news agents. I did my paper round from there, as referred to earlier. And there were all manner of things from different clothes shops and estate agents and a hall's the butchers which does feature you've got a nice big sign features on the video about stanley the duck i think this was the butchers actually where pinks is now and there was a hairdresser's now i remember it as garstones but the actual hairdresser that opened the business in 1934 was one leslie g robinson and he owned it from when he opened it till he retired in 1978 which is quite impressive and i think the first butcher's shop was E.C. Bailey, who went on to run a butcher's in Wallingham. And I remember, I think, I mean, I remember the businesses, can't remember exactly the addresses. I think this was Sanderstead Supply, a DIY shop. And then, definitely remember this little archway, and then it was a post office, this side of it. They used to sell wool and all that kind of stuff. And then card shop, I think, was Carousel. Once upon a time, it was Empire Stores. But I only remember it was Carousel. There was a florist, Kingswood Florist. There was a greengrocer's. I always remember Mum used to take the shopping bag and they would put it in there in a brown paper bag, which, of course, nowadays is really good for recycling, but maybe those days will return. And the one that probably stands out most at the end is it was Express Dairy. Originally it was somebody else's dairy, but it became Express Dairy. They used to run the milk floats and things. And then it was Sanderstead Motorcycles. All right, heading back now. A few thanks in order, I think. Firstly, to the Bourne Society, who've been doing just such fantastic work for local history since 1956. So thank you, Bourne Society. Great publications, got Facebook references and sites and things. And I reached out to them to help with my research for these videos. They've been really supportive. So thank you, Bourne Society. Thank you to the East Surrey Museum. Well worth a visit there in Catrum. Really friendly people. Amazing set of artefacts there. And you can purchase publications there also. So thank you guys. Thank you for your support. Thanks to local history fans everywhere. I'm trying to do my bit for local history with these videos. And hopefully that helps people to understand a bit about their area and what it entails and how it got there and why it is like it is, as well as some of the stories that have happened. And lastly, thank you for watching the video. Hope you get some enjoyment from it. And as mentioned earlier, as I cross the road to the beach, please feel free to subscribe, just hit the button click the bell for notifications. I don't do a massive amount of videos, you won't be bombarded, but I do like to put the work in to get the story right. So I want to tell you stories of local history. So look after yourselves and I'll see you in the next one.